Hey you guys. So Crystal here. Thank you for coming back to my channel, y'all. Uh, it's life. Um, this is like my whew, fifth try time trying to do this. And I try to utilize nap time as much as I can. But here we are with my guest, Miss Ava. And this is mom life. So just know that your vision, nothing stops the what what needs to happen okay yeah yeah so this is my guest today for my reading of chapter four of my book seven powerful ways to identify and conquer your fears and just a little recap if you have not watched um the videos where me pretty much talking about the book and the awareness of the fact that at the time when i wrote this book eight years ago this was the um, cry for help at the time but now it's like the strategy that pretty much got me through that time because when I wrote the book I went into like the hardest years of my life like right immediately after publishing this book I went into a hard time in my life three years three of those years <clears throat> were the hardest but it was a time of like just a lot of awareness. I had to grow through a lot of stuff. I had to become aware of a lot of things. So now this book is the strategy for that. So it's called Women vs. Freedom, Seven, po Seven Powerful Ways to Identify and Conquer Your Fears. And I'm going to be reading chapter four now. Um, and if you have not already, like I said, I've read, um, I have a video where I talk about the awareness of how this is now the strategy for my life and the strategy for you maybe. And I've read chapter one through three so far. And um, here we go. So chapter four is called Defeat One Minute. And it's pretty much about procrastination and how procrastination is definitely a huge player in our lives that keeps us away from Becoming who we are in God, living out our purpose and our destiny, um, just knowing, you know, knowing who we are, like fighting procrastination, y'all, you have to be able to do that. And procrastination can come in so many different ways and be such distract, so distracting. And we can use procrastination as anything, motherhood, being a wife, um, Oh, I have to worry about this over here first before I worry about me and my purpose and my call. So, yeah, procrastination. Y'all have to tell procrastination to get out of your life. Okay. So, chapter four, defeat one minute. I can do it later. <clears throat> Does that sound familiar? You may think that you are making a wise choice by putting things off until later, but maybe you're not. I am a firm believer in the saying, everything happens for a reason. Maybe you putting things off is a wise choice in certain situations, but not all. Some things you set aside could have been or will be missed opportunities. Think about that. How do you know? It's a feeling or it will reveal itself later. Better yet, you should ask God. Stop setting things aside because of laziness, boredom, or maybe you begin to think about the outcome and fear begins to take over. You may think it will never work and you worry about what others will think. Procrastination is not hard work. Well, now that I think about it, it is hard work. Procrastination is really hard work. It's like telling a lie and then you have to cover it up later. You then cover up the lie with another lie and cover up that lie with another lie. Procrastination equals hard work. Did you know that procrastination is sin? When you procrastinate, the harder you have to work towards that deadline, towards your goals, towards everything. This applies to every aspect of your life. The longer you wait, the harder you have to work. If procrastination is one of those if, is procrastin if procrastination is one of your strongholds, I suggest you start disciplining yourself. Procrastination can happen for many reasons. Indecision, perfectionism, fear, anger, laziness. Remember, you have to make up your mind and you are in control of what you do. So be aware of what and whom you are giving your time to. If you haven't done this yet, 
refer back to chapter one. Hold yourself accountable. Set a schedule and get things done. Procrastination will strengthen your fear, kill your dreams, and steal your opportunities. Fearless reflection. First question, what's worse, falling or never trying? I mean, failing or never trying. Number two, what distractions or habits can you control? Number three, are your daily activities productive? Number four, why are you procrastinating? Scripture, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs 13, 4, King James Version. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Ecclesiastes 11, 4. And that is the age of chapter 4, y'all. <laughs> Let me get in a little closer. <clears throat> Look, I got so much to say about this chapter. Now, like I said... Y'all, procrastination has been such a thing for me. And I know, you know, everybody struggles with, like, procrastinating, right? And um, most of the time when we procrastinate, it's because we don't want to face what comes along with what we're procrastinating on. So, for instance, um, y'all, I got so many different instances, examples, times in my life where I procrastinated, but I had like, I tried to use me being a mother for the reason that I procrastinate on something else, especially when it's something that God has told me to do, or I'm just supposed to be obedient or I'm supposed to, you know, be focusing on business, knowing that this will be, you know, it will bring wealth to my family. I procrastinate for so many different reasons, but my main reason for procrastinating on a lot of things that I desire to do or knew that I should be doing is because of rejection. I didn't want to be rejected. Um, the opinions of people, what would people think of me, especially those that were close to me and knew me and my lifestyle and my situation. Um, I would procrastinate um, sometimes because I didn't feel like it or I didn't want to show up fear of success or fear of failure like you procrastinate because you jump ahead of um you just assume the outcome and you you feel like you're gonna fail before you even start or the fear of success and you know with the success comes discipline consistency you have to constantly show up you have to become a different person you have to do things you've never done before so that's why people like that's why i procrastinate let me talk about me that's why i procrastinated on a lot of things in my past and now you know i see and i think about a lot of things and regret and um shame and guilt try to come upon me after I procrastinated on things because now I sit and think about, oh, what if I had continued to do this when I was doing this, especially when it was something that I had momentum in that I was doing and I was consistent for a while and then I had momentum in it and then I started to slack off. I started to procrastinate because the momentum was starting to bring me success and because of the success, I would start to be like, oh no, let me stop. Because mm -mm, I know I should be doing this. I know I should be sending this email. My momentum has started to catch on. Like catch on fire pretty much. And um, people started to show up. And people started to see what I was doing. So I would immediately begin to back off. And the first thing that I would do is procrastinate. And that would immediately sabotage what I was doing. And man y'all like I just I I. Even thinking about it now, like some things, some projects that I was doing, some things that I was working on in business, and I just stopped because I was like, oh my God, I'm becoming successful. I'm attracting these different people. Um, people are starting to notice me. They're calling on me. And ultimately, this is what I want, but oh my God, now I got to show up. Now I have to keep going. Now I have to be consistent. And it's like, Crystal, what did you expect? <laughs> so what were you expecting from this isn't this what you wanted but now I automatically begin to procrastinate and I make excuses all because of my fear of success 
and imposter syndrome causes you procrastinate because it goes back to rejection and you wonder what people are going to think of you and the thing is you don't even have to worry about, it's not about the people that don't know you that you're worried about it's like i said it's the people that know you so it could be your parents your friends uh People that know your living situation or just know some very personal things about you that the world doesn't know about you. The people that God called you to doesn't know about you. But because this little handful of people know you and they're going to see what you're doing on social media, you feel like those group of people have the control over your life and they're going to just air out all of your stuff. So now procrastination begins to set in because... Now you like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. Oh, I got to Like so many different things begin to come up and you feel like now I have to do this and now I have to do that. Oh, I got to cook dinner. Oh, I have to take my kids to the park. Oh, I have to worry about this over here first before I can really keep going in this. So procrastination reveals itself in very subtle ways. And ultimately, it's just fear. It all boils back down to fear because fear can set such a foundation that when it begins to build up. So say your foundation, the foundation of your life and your decisions and what you do and how you move and how you show up is based on a foundation of fear. So now you have this foundation. Now you begin to build your plan. you like you're assessing your house based off of fear and so you look at this wall and you build up this wall, but it's a wall of perfectionism. And now you got another wall going up on top of this foundation and it's rejection. And now you have another wall going up on top of this foundation and it's the fear of success. And you have another wall going up on top of that foundation and it's the fear of failure. And you have another, now you're, now you're, um, let's skip the walls and now you're adding, um, the um sheetrock i don't know i skipped over a lot of stuff but now you're adding up the sheetrock you know to 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 begin to form the walls and now the sheetrock is nothing but um imposter syndrome oh my god so y'all see what how subtle um people just think procrastination but we have to get to the root of it and the root is always fear, but a fear of what? This is how you overcome procrastination. This is how you defeat one minute. Another thing I want to say, share too is that like, I've really had a desire lately to talk to just study time, but time from God's perspective. I haven't been on it like I should be, but study it from God's perspective. And we have to know that time is a gift, y'all. And anytime that that time can be stolen from you and wasted and knowing that it should be used um wisely because time we don't get back but god gives us the gift of time to do what we need to do like it takes time time is like such a process and it's such a um oh my gosh what's the word it's such a deep process <laughs> that you know time gives us and if it could be stolen away from us and then like it's may 9th not 9th it's may 10th right now and then you wake up one morning and it's december 10th and now you we're coming to another end of the year and you begin to reflect because that's usually what we do in December as the year begins to close out. And you go back and you reflect on like, man, what did I do with my time from May to December? Like, what have I accomplished? Have I done anything? And you'll, you'll see how your time has been stolen from you, where you've wasted it at and you could have been doing this or you should have done this, you know. It's just, it, it applies to every part of your life. So when I say defeat one minute, it's all about defeating procrastination. And like I said, at the end of the, the chapter, um, procrastination will strengthen your fear, kill your dreams, and steal your opportunities, y'all. Procrastination will strengthen your fear. Kill your dreams and steal your opportunities. So when I say it will strengthen your fear, listen, because now you're procrastinating. Guess what comes along with that? Anxiety, worry, doubt, 
it will strengthen the fear because now you have anxiety about not completing the things you should have done. Um, now you feel guilty and now you feel shame. And that does nothing but put more heaviness on us. And um, it strengthens the fear. <sighs> I could keep going, but I'm not going to keep going. It kills your dreams and steals your opportunities. So if you had done this, you know, it kills your dreams because you have a vision and you have goals and you like you're you you have this desire, the desires of your heart. You want to see manifest and become a reality like it's up here in your head. But now you want to see it become reality. and You actually live what you see in your mind. Procrastination kills that vision, kills that dream. And it steals the oppor your opportunities. Ooh, y'all, I got so many stories about opportunities that have been taken away from me because I wasn't prepared. And I wasn't prepared because I was wasting my time. I was procrastinating. Like, for instance, I'll share this story. Um, I had an opportunity for to uh, go to an event. It was in L.A. And ooh, this was during the time, y'all, when, no, I had... I was still in the them, them dark them years of like just I don't know it was my valley moments for real for real <laughs> and by faith I signed up to win a ticket for a women's empowerment event in LA and Y'all, I just signed up, not thinking I was going to win, not thinking like, you know, I was going to get it. I just signed up. Once again, what are you expecting, Crystal? Y'all, I didn't have no money or anything like that. I just signed up because I was like, oh, this is an event that I would just love to go to. And I received an email saying that I won the ticket. And I won also a ticket for a guest. Like they had opened up more tickets or something like that. Y'all, I was so shocked. So I told a friend of mine. And she was able to go. Like she was able to drop everything. She had the finances to do it. Y'all, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to go. And... It sucked. Like, she was trying to help me figure things out. Like, she didn't offer me no money or say, oh, I'll buy you a plane ticket and stuff like that. But I didn't have the money to get a plane ticket. I didn't have the money to get a hotel room. I probably didn't even have the clothes to wear. My hair probably wasn't even done. My hair <laughs> probably wasn't done. So, like, this opportunity came my way. And who knows what that would have done for me. You know, like me being able to attend an event like this for free. And network among all of these great, powerful women who have accomplished so many things. And I missed that because I wasn't ready for what I signed up for. What I had desired to do. And that's what procrastination does. Now, if I was handling my finances properly, saving money... Um, you know, just running my business properly and how I desire to do it. And I would have had the money. I would have been prepared, um, to, to take that opportunity. So she was able to go and, you know, I'm glad that she was cause I was able to pass it along, but it sucked that I wasn't able to go. So this is what procrastination can do. It can make you miss so many opportunities. She's sleepy, y'all. That's why she's doing all this moving around. Ooh, and this still applies to my life today, y'all. Like, procrastination is hard work because once you procrastinate, now it's like you have to do double the work, triple the work, quadruple the work because you procrastinate once and it catches on like a wildfire. And then if you don't catch it at the moment that you need to catch it, it will keep going and keep going. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I'll do that Wednesday. I'll do it. Oh, man, I was supposed to do this on Monday. Now it's Friday. Okay, I'll do it next Monday. And it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. And now it becomes hard work because now when you want to wrap your mind around getting it done, it's... Oh, Y'all, I'm preaching to myself still. Once you want to wrap your mind around getting it done and sitting down to do it, 
you feel overwhelmed because if you had did it at the time you were supposed to, it wouldn't feel so hard. It wouldn't be so hard to do in the moment that you need to get it done. So that's why I said when you procrastinate, the harder you have to work towards the deadline, towards your goals, towards everything. This applies to every aspect of your life. So any area of your life that you procrastinate in, um, it's going to be hard work. Every minute that you allow to go by that you don't sit down and focus on that one thing that you need to do, it becomes harder to get done. That's when you have to ask God for some good grace, y'all, and to redeem the time so it doesn't feel so hard. It doesn't, you know, and it's all a mental thing. You can be like, Lord, I procrastinated on this. Forgive me. I know it was something I was supposed to get done. Lord, give me the grace to finish it, to complete it. And get it done right. Because even when you procrastinate and you try to work on something and it has become too late or you, you know, you've taken too long to do it. Now you have to rush. Now you are, you're not fully focused. You haven't given it the time that it needed to be completed properly. So now you can cut corners. You um, will probably half do the work. It won't be done with excellence, y'all. So there's so many consequences to procrastination. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'm looking at the reflection questions. What's worse, failing or never trying? Of course, never trying is the worst. <laughs> Never trying. You know, Miles Monroe, my husband always brings this up, but Miles Monroe, the great Miles Monroe, he says that something about, uh, and I'm just quoting how I remember it, he says that um, something about the most expensive place or the most money is found in the graveyard. And pretty much he's talking about how many People have gone to the grave, they've died and did not manifest or bring to life or lived what they were supposed to do and why so many other things came up to distract them and keep them away from what they were supposed to do, which ultimately causes them to procrastinate or feel like something is more of a priority over what they're really supposed to be doing. Um, what distractions or habits can you control? Ooh, that's a good question too. <laughs> um, maybe you need to change your habits to become a person that doesn't procrastinate. And it takes time. So don't think that because you've been a avid procrastinator um, that the next day you're automatically going to be different and not a procrastinator anymore. Remember, this has become a habit. So now what can you do to begin to change that habit over time? Um, so you don't procrastinate so much. Do you need to set times to get the work done? Um, do you need to block out time? You need to have a calendar. Do you need to be planning out stuff? And all of the things that would distract you. So let me just give an example. Um, what distractions can you control? So for me, one that I know that I have you need have um, needed to make a priority to deal with is... Me as a mom and a wife, I'm trying to become more of a homemaker and maintain my home. So budgeting and meal planning is definitely two of those things that distract me a lot and it's always on my mind. So, and it requires me to plan. And I used to tell myself that I was never a planner, a person that plans, no matter how much I tried. Why? Because... That's just some, not something I've ever did. I never planned out anything. I never set goals. I never, but I, would, I was the, the person that always buying planners and stickers and all this stuff, feeling like I needed to do all of these things to become a person that plans. But meal planning and budgeting was always a thing that would distract me. Why? Because if I didn't budget, then I'm worried about money. I'm worried about where the money is coming from, where the money is going. You know, we would get money coming in and it would go right back out immediately or things will come up and we would have to take from this to put it over here. And when you budget, it gives you a sense of peace. Like, okay, I know how much money I need to have coming in. I know how much money is coming in. I know what my bills are exactly, what my expenses are. 
and I need to look at this and keep this as a vision so I don't have to worry about my bills and where my money is going. I have a place to allocate my money and now after that, my bills are paid, I can do everything else. That used to worry me, y'all. Like, I used to be so worried about money, the lack thereof. And guess what? As a daughter of the Most High, we should not be worrying about money. And I just needed to do this simple thing, budget, to know what I have coming in and going out. And then I know what I could do with the rest. I'm just forecasting and saying, okay, money, this is what we're doing, not money controlling me. And that used to take up a lot of mental space in my mind. And because of that, y'all, I lived in constant lack because when money would come in, it would just burn right on through our hands. Like we would feel like, you know, we could do whatever we want, but that's not what we were supposed to be doing. So having a budget in place, knowing exactly what I need it won't cause me to procrastinate on saving anymore or it won't cause me to work, take up so much mental space where I can't focus on anything else causing me to procrastinate. Um, and then distractions, that would distract me. So even meal planning, um, I would grocery shop, but I wouldn't meal plan. So I would write out a list all the time, but I would not plan out meals. And that started to become a thing too for me because... I would be like, oh, what are they going to eat today? Or, oh, I don't want to cook today. So we're going to figure out what we're going to go out and eat. And guess what? So because I didn't have a meal plan and I didn't stick to the meal plan, I would go out and buy food. And then guess what? Now I'm worried about the money we're spending eating out, which is cutting into the budget. And now the budget is a mess. <laughs> so so y'all see how... Things can have a trickle effect and cause you to procrastinate. It's subtle things like that that causes you to procrastinate. Another thing is, are your daily activities productive? Do I need to answer that one? Why are you procrastinating? So this one can get deep and it has levels to it. Because your, your procrastination could be because you need some inner healing. You need some mindset work. You need to go to therapy um, to get healed and get over some money blocks or uh, your fears, imposter syndrome, things like that. Like, why are you procrastinating on things that you know you should be doing? Um, are you afraid of something? What excuses are you making? But usually when you ask that question, it's always something deep. It's an internal thing. And most people think it's external stuff like, oh, because I got to take care of my kids every day. They go to this practice and do this over here. stuff. No, that is not why you're procrastinating. I honestly think that procrastination always goes back to an internal thing and um, your thought process and just your mental capacity, period. And you need to deal with some stuff and you need to prioritize. You need to heal for some things, take that down and bring up the things that needs to be a priority so you don't procrastinate. And inner healing is always one of those things. So y'all, that was chapter four. That was so good just to reflect on chapter four. Y'all, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> But honestly, it's nothing but God. Um, and, you know, defeating one minute is a way to identify your fears. So when now when you have to face procrastination, we can become afraid and fear can definitely send in because it's like now I have to face my procrastination. And now my procrastination is going to make me face the things that I've been avoiding or I don't necessarily want to deal with. And. That's why there's levels to it because it's now why don't you want to face these things? What's going to come up once you start to deal with your procrastination? What's going to come up once you start to get to the root of why you procrastinate? You're wasting your time. What's going to come up that you're going to have to face and battle head on and conquer and overcome so you're not a procrastinator anymore? Now, 
it's not always an inner thing, healing thing, but to me, it is, you know, and I guess I'm applying it to my life, but when you procrastinate something that is definitely a priority in your life, there's a reason why. And most of the time it's not because, you know, you just don't want to do it. Y'all, my video cut off. But then you have to ask why, um, why are you procrastinating? Like, yeah. Are you trying to do multitask and do so many things at one time? Then you have to prioritize. Because if you're trying to multitask and do a lot of things at one time that is like burning you out, and stuff like that now you have to go back and assess that so there's don't so many different levels on um procrastination and why you're procrastinating so i definitely encourage you to assess your situation assess why you procrastinate assess why you feel like you have you can put things off can you afford to put things off can you afford to say, I'll do that tomorrow or the next day or the next day? Y'all, I'm talking to myself because I'm still overcoming these things, but I'm definitely at a place where I'm aware of why I was procrastinating on a lot of things, why procrastination had taken such a um, place in my life where it had control pretty much. So... Oh, that's chapter four, defeat one minute. And I am going to end this video here. This is chapter, y'all, it always gets so good. So if you got to the end or the second part of reading chapter four, I appreciate you. Kudos to you because you took the time to listen and I hope there was something in this video that blessed you, that um, helped you to say aha, like aha moments, let me get on this. And if you want a copy of this book, this is the this will be the original copy that I wrote eight years ago. It's available on my website, www.crystalclayton.com. Um, as soon as you go on the website at this time as soon as you go on the website you will see a graphic there you can click on it and you can get a free copy of this book it'll come directly to your email a pdf i don't think i will ever take this down i'm saying that now y'all but who knows you could be watching this video five years from now <laughs> um and i just want it to be a blessing and to help you or others at the time that they're in um yeah so on to chapter five thank you for watching please continue to tune in to hear all of the other chapters and i'll be back remember to follow me on instagram crystal clayton underscore i'm also on tiktok where I'll probably be more than anything now, but Crystal underscore Clayton on TikTok. And I'll just be sharing all of this stuff that you see here over there. And crystalclayton.com. Um, and just thank you for listening. Grab a copy of this book. <laughs>